Okay. So in the previous section, we perform the electrolysis, if you recall, in each of these electrolysis, the electrodes that we are using are the one which are inert electrodes. And when the inert electrodes were there, what is happening over here, if you see in the diagram, these are the ions in the solution, which are actually attracted towards both the electrodes when they got charged. And these ions over here undergoing reduction, the positive ions and the negative ions over here undergoing oxidation at inert electrodes. So the last two cases we have discussed, we have discussed uh, the electrolysis of the molten compounds and then we discussed the electrolysis of the aqueous compounds, both based on using inert electrodes. Now we are going to start with active electrodes. So here you go. Basically, the electrodes that we use in the electrolytic cell are two kinds. One are the inert electrodes and the second one are the active electrodes. Why we call them inert electrodes? Because they do not react during the electrolysis. They are the ones which just provide the electrons for the reaction to occur for the ions which are present in the solution, which are present in the electrolyte to get reduced or to oxidize. So that is what their purpose is. So that's why they do not react and we call them inert. Normally there are two uh, <laughs> substances from which we can make these inert electrodes. One is carbon. Uh, that is graphite and the other one is platinum. Okay. Now, the second case is active electrodes. Okay. What are active electrodes? Active electrodes are the ones which actually uh, take part in the reaction during the electrolysis. So, how can we figure out when the electrode is active? So, see, that is very uh, easy to understand that if there is a carbon or platinum, right, then it is going to be Inert. inert electrode. If there is any other substance is used as an electrode which is not carbon, graphite or platinum, then the electrode is going to be Inactive. active electrode. Okay. So, for example, and the other uh, thing that we have, uh, that we can identify about active electrode is, for example, that is an electrolyte copper sulfate. So, it contains a positive ion which is copper. And if I use the electrode, the material of the electrode is also a copper, then it is an active electrode. So, for example, if I'm using the electrolyte, let's suppose iron sulfate, and with the iron sulfate, if I'm using the electrode, the iron metal as an electrode, so it is going to become active. an active electrode. So, in inert electrode, there are two materials, there are two substances which can be used as an inert electrode. One is a platinum and the other one is a carbon graphite. Besides this, if there is a, any other material which is used as an electrode, then that other material is actually behaving as an active, active electrode. Is this clear to all of you? Yes, uh, yes Aisha and uh, Khatija, is this clear to you as well? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, sir, clear. Okay, now actually in inert electrode, what if you recall, there is a one negative electrode and the other one is the positive electrode. And what is happening during the electrolysis process, the ions which are positively charged are going to towards negative electrode and gets reduced. And the ions which are negatively charged attracted towards the positive electrode and gets oxidized. oxidized. Okay, but when the electrode is active, this is the case when it is inert. inert. When the electrode is active, now in, in an active electrode, the electrode which is positive is not going to attract the negative ion from the solution towards itself. That is the important thing. That is the concept that you have to understand when the electrode is active. The anion from the electrolyte does not going to be attracted towards the positive uh, electrode, but instead, beside this, that positive electrode itself oxidizes. 
So the difference over here is in the inert electrode anion oxidizes and here anode oxidizes because as see now the electrode is undergoing oxidation that's why we are calling it active electrode is this clear okay so what will happen i have mentioned over here that now in active electrode the anions in the electrolyte do not oxidize at anode Instead, anode itself undergo oxidation and the atoms of the metal loses their electrons to the surface of electrode and enters the aqueous solution as cations. So, for example, if here I am using the copper electrode as a positive electrode, mm -hmm. so what will happen that the copper atoms from the metal from the electrode start entering in the solution as an ion by losing the electrons on the surface. So how, uh, what will happen if this is, if this thing is occurring, if the copper is losing the electrons and turning into aqueous solution. So after some time, you are going to see the electrode is being like this. That electrode itself is start dissolving when it's an active electrode. And it only happens with the anode which is positively charged. Is this clear to all of you? Yes, Khatija and Aisha? Yes, sir. Okay, just complete this quickly, then we will discuss further.
Sí. सर मैंने आपसे पूछना था कि जब कॉपर एनोड में से ऑक्सीडाइज होके इलेक्ट्रोलाइट में आएगा सो वो इलेक्ट्रॉन्स जो है वो सरफेस पे अपनी छोड़ देगा लेकिन इस सेकंड पॉइंट में लिखा हुआ एटम्स ऑफ द मेटल लूजेस देयर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टू द सरफेस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड एंटर द इको सॉल्यूशन एज कैटायंस यस एनाइंस के तौर पे नहीं निकलेगा वो सॉरी तो वो एनाइंस के फॉर्म में नहीं एनाइंस आर नेगेटिवली चार्ज आयन राइट यस so the uh, atoms which are entering the aqueous solution loses the electron on the surface and as they lost the electron they becomes they becomes positively charged okay okay yes राइट so we have a aqueous copper to sulfate and we are going to perform the electrolysis we are going to perform the electrolysis with inert electrode as well as with active electrode so you can see the difference what is going to happen and here you will uh, after the question you have asked okay so when there are inert electrode as we discussed earlier inert electrode can be graphite or platinum right in case of active electrode the electrode is copper, copper. the electrolyte in both cases is going to be so aqueous copper sulfate right and as it is aqueous so it means it is dissolved in water. water so if it is dissolved in water so we are going to have these four ions the copper ion and the sulfate ion which comes from this compound and the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion both comes from water as it is aqueous is this clear yes aisha and khatija yes sir 
Yes, man, I have it. Yeah, hydrogen yeah, because there is a water as well. So water always splits into H positive and OH negative. Okay. So here there is an aqueous copper sulfate. So same thing is going to happen. That there are going to be four ions. Two ions of the electrolyte and two ions from water. Okay. Now, this is the case that in the previous two or three classes we are discussing. So you see that... The positive ion <laughs> is going to be reduced at cathode. Now we have a two positive ions. Manahi, can you tell me out of these two why copper is being reduced at cathode? What was the yes, it is. Both are positive. Hydrogen is also positive. Yes, because it is high reactivity states. Lower in reactivity states. We have discussed C over here that cations, which is lower in reactivity series, get reduced readily to form elements. So we compare these. So if you look at the reactivity series, hydrogen is above and copper is below, which means copper is less reactivity. Copper has less reactivity, not concentration. Concentration is applied when we are going to uh, check the negative ions. So, the copper is getting reduced, the copper ions, and forms copper metal. And copper metal is a pink solid. So, you are going to observe this observation at cathode. Now, we have two negative ions, sulfate and hydroxide. And we have discussed whenever there is a sulfate and nitrate, they are never going to oxidize at anode. In that case, only hydroxide ion will oxidize at anode. So, see. The hydroxide ion attracted towards anode mm -hmm. forms oxygen gas, water, and releases four electrons. So as the gas is formed, so you are going to observe the bubbles of a colorless gas. Okay, till here is this understandable to all of you? Yes, yes sir. Sir. and Aisha Abdul Ghani. <coughs> yes, Flybert. Did you understand? If you have any confusion. Hmm? And only hydroxide is because the rule states that that sulfate and nitrates never oxidizes at NOC over here. See, we have discussed these points in the last class. That if electrolyte has a nitrate or sulfate, then at anode only hydroxide oxidizes. And if they have these three then it, the concentration matters. If the solution is concentrated, these ions are oxidized at anode. And if the solution is diluted, then again hydroxide ion is oxidized at anode. Okay. So whenever there is a nitrate ion and the sulfate ion, no other anion attracted towards anode and oxidized at anode, but hydroxide ion. Okay. So that was the rule. And that rule you have to remember for to attempt the pass paper. Okay, now, so if you see over here, okay, what uh, common property you all know about transition elements? Transition elements, the one in the middle, these. They are metals. They are metals, what else? They, all they, metals are good conductor. They, the important thing about these transition metals is their compounds are colored. If we see the compounds of these metals or these metals, they do not form colored compounds. Their compounds are colorless. But the important thing about these transition elements are they form colored compounds. So here, the copper is an ion, which means copper is in the form of compound. And as it is in the form of compound, so it means solution is colored. So the solution is has blue, blue color. But the thing is that as the reaction proceeds, all of the copper deposited as solid. So it means the, there is going to be decrease in the concentration of copper ions. So as the copper ions concentration decreases in the solution, you are going to observe the fade in color, the color start getting fade and even if you continue it, the color, it turns uh, colorless. 
because all of the copper from ions from the solution deposited as a pink solid at cathode. Okay. So here, which electrode are used? Graphite, which are inert electrode, and that's why hydroxide ions from the solution are undergoing oxidation at anode. Now, have a look over here. Here the electrodes are copper. And if the electrodes are of copper, then it is a active electrode. Active electrode. So as we have discussed earlier, that see the electrode is, is of copper, right? So there, as it is, it have no charge, which means that there are atoms. So what they at, these atoms do at anode, they loses the electron and turns ions. And when they turns into ions, they uh, enters the aqueous solution. So what is happening at anode when there is an active electrode that uh, the size of the anode getting reduced, it gets smaller because the atoms which are solid are getting dissolved in the solution by becoming ions. That is what this point is stating that you have asked me. The atoms of metal loses their electrons to the surface of the electrode and enters the aqueous solution as cations. So we will show this by showing this equation that there is a copper which is initially solid. It means it's the part of electrode. Then it becomes aqueous with a positive two charge ion, which means now it turns into it, it turns into it enters into the aqueous solution. And now it's two positive, so it means it lost two electrons. Is this clear? Yeah. Yes. Aisha and uh, Khatija. Sir, I have a question. Yes. That in the one, the copper as a solid was uh, corrected like pink solid, but how uh, it changes to blue color? I didn't get it. Can you speak a little louder, please? Ah uh, yes, I am saying that uh, we received uh, we get the copper in solid form. It was in pink solid, but how it changes from pink to blue? I didn't get it. Okay, actually I couldn't hear you. Can you type it in the chat? Okay. Sir. Do type it in the chat, please. So the only difference you have to keep in that mind when there is an inert electrode anions from the electrolyte get oxidized at anode and when there is an active electrode anode itself undergo oxidation okay so it is Pink basically when it is a metal. Now it is pink. But when it turns into this ion, it will turns blue. And when it turns into this ion, now it is not anymore solid. It is aqueous. So the solution turns blue. The solution is blue. But as a solid, it does not becomes blue because as a solid, it's a metal. And a, as a metal, copper is always pink in color. Okay, Khatija? Okay, now the other observation over here in the solution. See, there are the copper ions in the solution which are turning into solid. into copper solid. So it means the ions, the concentration of the ions or the amount of the ions in the solution start decreasing. decreasing. So it means the color is going to be fade. But on the other hand, at anode, there is a copper which is again, which is turning into aqueous ions. So see, as the ions are getting reduced, as the ions are getting reduced and forming copper metal, it simultaneously from the other electrode, the copper atoms entering into the solution as a form of ions. So if both of these things are occurring, so do you think there is a change in concentration of copper ions? No. no. Here the copper ions are getting changed because the copper ions are only turning into solid. So the solution, the solution have after a time, it, it, its concentration is getting lower and lower due to which the solution's color fades. But here, 
the aqueous ions turning into solid and in the same way the solid is turning into aqueous ions again so due to this there will be no change in the concentration of aqueous ion and as there will be the no change in the concentration of copper to positive ions so, so that there is no change in the color the only difference that we are going to observe is okay both the electrodes are of copper so what is the color of both the electrodes initially blue blue, blue is what blue is its ion not the solid what is the color of the pink. solid pink solid. pink solid right okay so think it's a anode and it's a cathode at cathode more solid are formed and at anode the solid turning into aqueous so if it is the start of the experiment then when the experiment ends you are going to observe anode like this which indicates that its size decreases and cathode like this because here the copper is depositing so but see another difference here we have written down pink solid and here we didn't mention any pink solid instead we just mentioned size in there is a decrease and increase in size the reason behind this is that here we have used carbon electrodes right mm -hmm. so if the carbon electrodes are there what is the color of the graphite Carbon. Carbon. Isn't it black? Purple is iodine. That gaseous form. So here the electrode is initially black color. So when the spin, when the copper forms, it is uh, visible that there is a pink solid is getting deposited over here. But here initially it's copper, so it is already pink. So if the Again, a copper deposit, you are not going to observe a visible change. So that's why we are not going to write that pink solid is depositing because it is already solid. So the what is the visible change that after some time we will observe the increase in the size that it was initially pink. After the completion of the electrolysis, it stays pink, but the size gets bigger at cathode and the size gets at anode, the size gets thinner or it, the size decreases. Is this clear? Okay, note this down quickly. When Yes, Khatija. <clears throat> Sir, ye jo, uh, cathode pe ye copper aara, copper ki ions aare, ye electrolytes aare. Yes, they are coming from the electrolytes because electrolyte have a copper ions. Yes, active electrode. Isme, yeah, isme in active electrodes, when we use the active electrodes, the only difference uh, <laughs> in the reaction that is observed at anode. At cathode, whether the electrode are active or inert, the reaction is same. Yeah. Okay. okay sir. At cathode, whether the electrodes yes. are active or the electrodes are inert, the reaction is same. At anode, if the electrodes are inert, then anion would attract it towards anode and gets oxidized. And if there are active electrode, then anode itself oxidizes and turns ions and turn and enters the solution. Okay, sir. Okay. 
कार्बन सी सर यस कॉपर का रेड कलर कब होता है रेडिश ब्राउन दैट इज आयरन 3 पॉजिटिव कॉपर का एंड इन सम कॉपर ऑक्साइड वेयर अ कॉपर फॉर्म्स कॉपर 1 ऑक्साइड वेयर द ऑक्सीडेशन नंबर ऑफ कॉपर इज प्लस 1 देन इट विल फॉर्म रेड ओके yes everybody completed this okay so now have a what will be the application of active electrode we usually uh, use active electrode for the refining of copper For example, if I have an impure copper, so which anode, which electrode is actually dissolving during the active electrode? Anode. Anode. So we uh, make the impure copper as an anode, and the pure copper as cathode. So when the electrolysis starts, the anode start dissolving. So all the copper from the impure anode will be deposited to the cathode. 
and all the impurities will be collected at the bottom. So that's how we can make uh, purify mm -hmm. or refine impure copper by using active electrodes. Sir, yes. Yeah, negative yeah. And hydroxide and, and OH negative. This one I completed. Sanya, Rohe. Okay. Okay, we will discuss it in the okay. Okay, Aisha, I will share it as soon as possible. Yes, I will share it in the group. Okay. Allah Hafiz. Take care, everyone. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.